flywheel change. Uh, let me show you the trick on removing this thing. Make sure you put that bolt back on, that nut back on, not all the way tight, but just enough to protect the threads. Then we'll take a hammer and something like this. You're gonna put this between, I would recommend that you leave this on don't take this motor off to remove the flywheel. Leave the motor connected to put a new flywheel on. Little lip right here that you can hammer against the frame instead of the block of the engine. You're going to insert this guy between the frame there and the block of the engine. You're going to just hit that really hard and it'll come loose. And then that'll just come right off, guys. This is a bone stock flywheel. This is the flywheel from ARC Racing Billet. And this is just what the heck ever <laughs> this is a dangerous flywheel this is a safe flywheel here's the, here's why when you start running more rpm in this motor safety and reliability and durability become your number one concern this is not a hot rod this is a workhorse here's the point i've blown up two motors you've seen it i think the rings are And in talking with people who've built these motors and blown them up as well, the one thing we all keep coming to is that high RPM makes these engines just rattle and break themselves apart. It's, it's, there seems to be, and I didn't come up with this, but another uh, subscriber did, and I think he's right. I can't remember but who it was. Just comment below and I will chat there. And He mentioned that it seems like when you get to a certain rpm these engines the, especially the 200 cc engines that do not have the counterbalancer develop some kind of resonance frequency that just vibrates them and just tears them apart and it just blows itself apart i've come to the conclusion that the best way to save these engines for the long run is to keep the governor in the engine do not remove it just don't remove it leave it in well a lot of people are set in this thinking that the only way to get more horsepower out of a small engine is more rpm now it's true you don't have the displacement so we can't just magically displace without you know stroking the engine and really spending a lot of money that's just not really worth it but the primary way these this engine is going to make more power is more air and fuel mixture in the combustion chamber ergo the good intake rejet the carburetor the good exhaust okay but we're adjusting the governor as well. We can adjust that governor and get about 4,500 RPM, 46, 4,700 RPM, an extra thousand RPM or so out of the motor. In fact, we could get more than that, but I'm not going to do that. And anytime you're running more than stock RPM, you have to start considering safety. Now, in the past, most guys have just removed the governor and gone with a billet rod and a billet flywheel. But that's just not enough unless you have the ability to completely balance that flywheel and things like that, which I don't. It's just not safe to run these motors much more than about five grand RPM wise. That's why we're keeping the gover governor in. But <clears throat> there's one big safety component, the flywheel. The design of that flywheel only has one magnet on one side and is incredibly, incredibly unbalanced and unsafe. It's just you're taking a risk oh here's this is what i mean look at this it's just cast molten and cast this is billet this was once a solid block of aluminum that was milled and cnc cut out of a solid block of aluminum you can see this is hollow here this is a heavy flywheel this is a little lighter that's the magnet that's the magneto you take a heavy piece of metal you put a magnet on it, you spin it around at fast speeds, what do you get? You get electricity. You get an electromagnetic field, electricity. You get some juice. Look at the other side. There's nothing. Right? Do you see that? There's nothing. There's just a blank open space. There's nothing. Magnet. Nothing. Spin that at 6,000 RPM and tell me you won't kill yourself with it. If you don't think that's gonna be happen, I'm not gonna say what I wanna say. This is dangerous, look here. This force here, it's just glued in here. It's set into some sort of plastic and then they have a screw in there. The problem is, as this turns around, 
you know, this is wanting to fly off into space, right? And the faster this spins, the more that wants to fly off into space. Okay. Now there's going to come a point. It may be 6,000, maybe seven, maybe 8,000 RPM where that thing will kind of reach a point where it will fly off in there and that screw will form some sort of a hairline fracture down in here and the faster you run the more it will spread and this this will go off and you now have a grenade look at this magnet you see that the magnet is actually encased inside now you see that now let's spin this around look at that on the other side there's another magnet do you think that's going to be balanced? And it's a lighter flywheel. Let me tell you the difference. This is a heavy flywheel. I don't have the scale. I'm not even going to try to weight it. Here's the problem with a heavy flywheel. Heavy flywheels take more power to spin up. What's the purpose of a flywheel? Internal combustion engine, suck, squish, bang, blow. Suck, squish, bang, blow. You know, you're, the engine's only producing power on one stroke out of the four. What this does is store that energy and it keeps the engine moving around and charging so that you won't have a herky jerky engine, right? Uh, a heavy flywheel will store that energy very effectively. The problem is it takes a lot more power to get it rolling, to get it spinning. You put that big fan on top of it and you got all that air to move too. So it's just, you're sucking away power, believe it or not. It's a lot lighter, almost feels half the weight. It takes a lot less energy to spin this thing up. You'll get faster acceleration. <laughs> now here's the downside of a light flywheel. It won't hold on to energy. Remember how I was on the river talking about doing that big back turn? You'll bleed off more energy with a lighter flywheel. Fortunately, this is not a lightweight flywheel. This is just a middleweight flywheel. But it will hold, it will still hold on to some of that energy because it's not lightweight, super lightweight. Now this thing retails for right at about $105. So this is the more expensive version type of flywheel. If you're wanting a cost-effective flywheel, there's another one by Dino Cams that make and they import one that's only about $67. And I, I would recommend that one. This one also has an eight-degree timing advance. A lot of people, someone was asking me about eight-degree timing advance. This one has it already built in, so we could just use the keyway and the timing advance is built in and there's no real uh, problems with that at all. So you're going to get the advanced timing and the benefits from that, which means uh, a little bit more power, things like that, uh, by setting off the spark a touch early. OK, this is the uh, the coil. The gap on the coil is at l minimum 30 thousandths. It's breaking, but didn't really want to. Now, let's see. We should be able to get it on here, hopefully. Oh. There we go. The idea is to put that uh, grind that's grinding compound in here. I don't know if I showed you this, but lapping compound, approximately two ounces. Uh, I guess it's a 220 grit lapping compound because you got to mate the surface of this flywheel to the surface of this crankshaft. Back and forth like that gently. All right, so now this is the critical part. You have to get 100% of this stuff off. This grinding compound, all of it has to come off. If any of that gets inside your engine, it will destroy your engine. A brake cleaner, carb cleaner, whatever. Just uh, spray as much on there as possible. <laughs> Don't be scared to use it. Surprisingly, even with a, a motor of this caliber and quality, the keyway was actually installed the wrong way. It was installed flush and level, and it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be flush and level on the upper end and come tapered out. This is what you're looking for. The back end is somewhat sunk in. The front end just follows it so that you can see that it's simply tapered. We need to, but it's not supposed to be just perfectly parallel. It's supposed to stick out a little bit. There we go. That's about it right there. That's we're going to keep it just like that. OK, you see how that's sort of parallel to the shaft. It, it doesn't fall. It should not follow the taper. There should be a little bit bigger here towards this end and a little shallower there toward that end. Keyway slot goes right in there.
54 foot pounds. There we go, right there. You see that? It's tap, tap, triple tap. Fellas, we have got this to 50 thousandths of an inch here. It's just some, uh, what do you call these things? Feeler gauges here, here and below. So, but we got it to 50 thousandths. So that's more than the minimum, but not the optimum, but it works. Otherwise we would probably just have to find a different coil to work with this. modifying these little motors get a good intake get a good exhaust rejet the carburetor and that's it <laughs> here's here, here are my current recommendations get more displacement always if you need more power than what a basic carburetor rejet a intake and exhaust can get you you really just need more displacement you just need a bigger motor Say the SPS kits, that's what I'm most familiar with. Get the, get the, I'm sorry, get the medium SPS kit with a 301 Predator engine or a 270 Honda or something like that, okay? Now for my situation, I just don't have the cash for a new motor. I'm building this new boat and my money's having to go there. I'm wanting to invest in new lenses for this camera. It's reasonable to modify these engines some for our application because these are just power generator engines. Remember, the, I don't, can't pronounce the fella's name, but the man who invented the coupler that will allow you to mate an engine to a long shaft propeller, the engines came first and he just saw a way to mate those already readily available engines to a affordable, durable, reliable kit system or, or mounting system that would allow anybody to just have an outboard motor. That's what it's about. Once you get into the realm of wanting to spend more RPM and all of that, you're already going to lessen the life of the engine, period. I've learned that through blowing up two motors. There's some sort of weird resonance frequency that sets up with these motors. Everyone who's built one of these motors at say stage two or three where they yank the governor and yank the oil sensor and put in a billet rod and put in a performance camshaft, every single person I know says the engine vibrates wildly. It's just, it just vibrates like crazy. There's no counterbalancer like there is in the large block. Buy a large block to start with, right? These little 200cc motors, you're not gonna be able to do much to them in terms of performance. Now, if this were a racing engine and there was a 200cc class, of course I'd be yanking governors, but I'm not doing this. This is wilderness travel. Look at guys who build trucks for what they call overlanding. This is not off-road. Off-road guys do as much hot rodding as anybody on the drag strip, but they're just going on hot, off-road, they aren't going out into the wilderness. You go to Africa, where they're all going all up and down these deserts. You go to Australia, where they're going all the way through the outback. Even here in the United States, where they're going some of these long desert tracks. I'm not talking about the Baja race. I'm talking about these long cross-country expeditions, okay, where they're having to live out of their vehicle, and the vehicle has to be reliable 100% of the time. I have yet to see anybody build these engines to a racing spec and actually using it for long distance wilderness travel. And those who do are just pipe dreaming. And I say that and I, that's gonna step on a lot of toes, but that's okay, right? Because quite frankly, those people don't have to pay for the engines that I have to build, all right? Don't take advice from somebody where they either don't have the experience, the knowledge, or haven't put it to the test to the point of failure. Just don't take their advice right that you, you'll you'll find yourself in trouble what did i do with this motor differently than just a basic intake exhaust and carburetor reject well as you remember i had that flywheel from that old motor the uh, box stock motor that i blew up last year it's a good flywheel i am far more interested in creating a more efficient engine than i am a hot rod engine the governor stays in the stock rod stays in i do adjust the governor throttle stop. It puts more pressure on the governor and allow you to spend some more RPM. 
but I'm, you know, I don't want to spend more than 4,500 RPM, 4,600 RPM. That's all I want to do. Since I already had that flywheel, I put it on there. You know, when you start building a bunch of motors like this, you have parts available for one particular size, and you tend to want to stick with that size. I have weight restrictions. I mean, my boat is just a light boat. You know, a 301 with the with a medium kit is just a touch too heavy. So I'm thinking, can we get more efficiency out of this engine by putting a a better designed flywheel on it. It's a lighter flywheel. It's going to spin up to RPM faster. Fewer fins that are aerodynamically shaped and smooth means there's going to be less turbulence there in the airflow in terms of cooling the cylinder head as far as I'm concerned. So it won't slow down as fast because of the aerodynamic or the parasitic drag because of the cooling fins. So you'll lose less momentum as the engine is already spinning up. You have a stronger magnet. That stronger magnet sends a stronger spark. It has two magnets. It's better balanced. So as you're spinning a little faster, you're, you know, say 4,600 RPM, you're still spinning, you know. Now the question is, is what about the longevity since I'm going beyond stock RPM? Yes, it is going to lessen the life of the engine if I run it like a scald dog all the time. But one of the things I'm finding with the extra power, I'm not running at full throttle all the time anyway. With a bone stock motor, I was running at full throttle and you still feel like you're going slow. Whereas this motor, as it is now, I run it at three quarters throttle and it feels faster at three quarters throttle than full throttle without all the mod. Now, if I do run it at full throttle, I only run it full throttle for maybe half a mile then you back it back down and you just let the engine cool off and you just run it three quarters throttle most of the time. Uh, it's starting to rain. We do have the billet flywheel and the governor is what's limiting the RPM on the motor. That my friends is how you build a safe motor for wilderness travel.